Hi, this is Kevin Deal from Upscale Audio, and today I'm here with Kat Orlin. Hi. And we are going to talk about the Focal Canta 3. In fact, we're going to talk about the Focal Canta 1, 2, and 3, but this is a, cat, a Canta 3. And I want Kat here because for a couple of reasons. Number one, you have Canta, don't you? I do have the ones. You do? Yeah. And, you, and I love them so much. Yeah, I know she does. She loves them so much that they wanted to invite uh, somebody over. They said, we need to invite the most important person at Upscale Audio over to visit the factory. And I said, oh, <laughs> well, I might be available. I'll check my camera or my, 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 uh, you know, my calendar. And they go, no, who'd they invite? <laughs> Me. Yeah, and she became best friends with everybody, and now it's kind of like, is Kat there? I mean, nobody wants, that's the way it is here anymore, but. I just love Focal so much, I wanted to know more about them, so. And it's quite a factory, it's isn't quite it? quite a factory, it was so impressive. It is unbelievable. Yeah. I had already been there before, in fact, I was there when this speaker was launched. Now, here's the cool thing about Cantas, right? They've been out for a couple of years, but instead of slowing down in sales, they have actually sped up in sales. In fact, they have sped up to the point that uh, presently they're only bringing them into North America because they cannot make these cabinets and then this material in the front, they cannot make them really, they can't speed up the manufacturing, right, to supply the whole world. So presently they're only coming and there's a lot of dealers that don't even have them in stock here. However, we do, we right? Do, yes. Because I always try to have seven stock for you. So why is this speaker so freaking good, right? I mean, first off, they wanted to create a speaker that even, this is the Model 3, this is the big kahuna, right? But they have so much more bottom end than uh, they should for a speaker of their size. Like your Canta 1s have got bottom end, right? Yeah, no, they fill the space. Yeah. Yeah, some serious kick to them. And they did that all through technology. So let me, I'm gonna just give a quick rundown yeah, here. Yeah, let's what do it. Okay, look, there's, there are speaker companies on this planet that would not even be in existence were it not for Focal, because Focal was a driver company, a research and development and driver company initially, right? So there are big companies out there that became big because of these guys and gals and uh, would be nowheresville without Focal. And so, you know, many, many years ago, they said, why are we making everybody else rich? And they have indeed become I mean, really, uh, when it comes to R&D, nobody, yeah. nobody does. Well. I mean, some of these really big companies, and I'm talking about the big ones, they're what we call alligator clip engineers. What that means is they'll take this inductor or they'll take this capacitor and they alligator clip it in and they go, how's that, you know? That's not what Focal is about. They make, how many drivers do they make? 120? Around 120 drivers. 126 drivers, Individual right? drivers. Individual drivers. Say, yeah. And so what that means is this. If you're talking about an eight inch uh, driver like this that uses a uh, flax, right? Well, they make this driver in an eight inch different ways depending on the application. So they're able to manipulate everything from the thickness of the flax to the way that the bobbin is wound, the number of tur turns on the bobbin, the, the magnet structure, everything and that means that they can make the driver perfect and that means they can make the crossover uh, less obvious I guess is the best way to put it I mean everything just works that much better when mm. you don't have to overcome physical limitations of trying to take a driver that's not perfect for the application and bang it into place and then use a crossover to yeah, get it to sure. do what you want it to do it's doing what you want it to do and and that's the magic no, of it. It's a really account. good way of putting it, actually. Yeah. Um, and they and I was telling Kevin earlier, being able to like see their new facility since he's been there, they've got anechoic chambers for every single driver. They have different anechoic chambers for every single speaker size. And then their main anechoic chamber, I think, had like 18 different omnidirectional mics going on. I mean, the research and development for speakers with Focal or any new product takes anywhere from five to seven years. So they're not putting that, you know, that stuff out just I almost swore. Just, you know, after one week or two weeks or a couple of months of development, it's true art and science and research, and I love it. And it is all done in-house, all the way down to the cabinets, because this cabinet is made in Europe, and that's something about the speaker. Now, what did they say about this new baffle board material? How thick would the, it had, this baffle board is part of the magic of the speaker, and this material is so dense and inert 
that if they tried to make this out of MDF, I think it would have to be like an, like an eight inch like baffle board to, yeah, yeah. Uh, in order to achieve that. And I thought that was amazing. And then inside in the skeleton, every cabinet from Kanta, you know, their new series down below, or even the Arias, the Sopras, Utopias, all of them have different de density MDFs too. Mm -hmm. They're all cut, shaped different and measured differently. So let's talk about the tweeter real quick. This tweeter is made out of beryllium. Yay. Yeah, and you <laughs> saw them making the, the domes, right? Yes, I did. It was actually really kind of, uh, you know, kind of retro, a little spacey because they had the heating mechanism, the heating machine outside of the factory feeding in through the wall to a dude with a hazmat suit that was stretching, cutting beryllium and, you know, slapping it off down the conveyor belt. And this is a beryllium, this is very expensive. This is solid beryllium, this tuning point uh, fork. Uh, this is titanium. And if I was to take both of these and tap them, Yum, yo, re, kia, yo. They tuning for. Yeah. <laughs> the titanium continues to ring and ring and ring and ring and ring. You guys did recordings of that too, right? We have a recording. We'll show you the, uh, the chart. Yeah. And beryllium does not. And it's just so perfectly well suited. Uh, in fact, Kat came back. I'll let you hold this. You want to throw that? <laughs> yeah. This is a beryllium dome. And they weigh nothing. And... <laughs> <laughs> Don't step on it. Okay. Okay, because I lost the last one I got. We'll find that later. So they use a pour on suspension around the edge, and that uh, allows them to cross it over a little bit differently than you would normally cross over a tweeter at. And that means that it blends better with the mid range driver. So you're not listening to a mid range driver and a tweeter separately. They blend together. And what we're trying to do is really create a single point source by getting these two to meet more gracefully together. When I saw the actual structure of the Brilliant Tweeter in the factory, um, the woman was doing the fine QC for it and she was driving 10 hertz through it. And this thing did not break structure. It was incredible for a tweeter, 10 yeah. hertz. Unbelievable. Yeah. But that's the key though. If you buy a Focal speaker, you got to let it break in. Mm -hmm. And you people that don't believe in that, you are on crack, you are <laughs> out of your gourd because I have, we have the benefit of listening to speakers that are brand new and speakers that have been in the demo room for a year, right? And the difference is striking. So if anybody tells you that a clip speaker is bright mm -hmm. or a Focal speaker is bright, they have only listened to brand new ones. Uh, you got to let them break in because this suspension has got to get into its groove. There's a lot of technology in here. There's a lot of things that need to work its way in. Now, what about the shape of the dome? Okay, so it's an inverted dome. Um, actually, if you were to take a cross section of it, I've mentioned this before, but it'll look like the letter M. So the inverted dome, that's creating, I mean, the reason why they designed it that way is to create very low directivity. Vocal wants a very clean, linear speaker, and they want to control the dispersion. Right, no matter where you are in the room, yeah. right? And that's the problem. The higher up you go in frequencies, bass is on the directional, right? And then the higher up you go in frequencies, the more directional it becomes. So with a tweeter like this, it's very important that you get the best dispersion you can. That's why they use dome uh, tweeters, is to try to do that. Well, the inverted M is even a step beyond that. And it is absolutely amazing. And the benefit to you is you don't have to have your head in a vise. You can be sitting over here and over here and you're gonna get all the air and all the space and, and all the, the beauty. Uh, I remember my t uh, the first time I showed my parents Focal when they came to the shop when I first started working for you, I played the Utopias for them. My mother is very sensitive to all frequencies. And I we were playing the Focal and she came out of there being like, this music just surrounded me. I don't even know what I just came out of. I was like, yes, Rose, that's it. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah. All right, now let's talk about the, uh, the mid-range driver. Yeah, because it is a lot different from the other drivers. Uh, this is the flax driver. Here's the deal. Like paper cones are really an amazing uh, material to make speakers out of because they uh, paper sounds Natural. Light, yeah, right? lightweight, natural. The problem with paper is it breaks up. You know, if you try to make it really, really lightweight, it's going to break up. So people have done all kinds of tricks. They've taken paper and uh, molded it along with Lexan or along with polypropylene, or they've mixed it with this, or they've sprayed it with that, and all kinds of stuff to get it. Because the problem with paper is it's not stiff enough, and it can have a tendency to break up. 
And then you can use all kinds of other cones, but they may not sound quite as natural. And I love, they wanted to come up with a way to have a cone that they could control in manufacturing, number one, mm -hmm. number two, that would sound natural. Mm -hmm. And Kat got them to give them this. They I, would not. I know. Did you steal it? I saw, no, I didn't. I promise. I swear to God, they wouldn't let me have it. <laughs> but and I, I'm the owner of the freaking company. I saw them weaving it with the glass fiber sheets, and it was just incredible. I was like, is this the flax driver? Like, is this it in the flesh from bare bones? And they're uh, like, yes, yes, it is. I'm so annoyed. Where'd that cone go? And we grow those seeds in the north of France. Yeah, oh, it's uh, right yeah here. and they have bales of it. So uh, this is flax. It is true. They have bales of it there. They grow oh. it in France. And this is a flax cone. And the beauty of this cone is they can manipulate everything about it to make it perfect for the application. Just like, you know, the fact that they make 126 different drivers or more. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's just so, so bitching. But that's only part of it. Now let's talk about uh, the, uh, oh my gosh. Oh, the TMD, the, the yeah. surround for it. Yes. Tune mass damping. Yes. So, okay, obviously we've got the mid the mid band up here and we've got some bass drivers down here six and a half eight inch but there's a lot of frequencies that you need to control with a mid driver like think about it you've got anywhere from like 3k but then you're all go going all the way down to like maybe 500 hertz or something right it's a lot of frequencies to control right and the problem is that you can get resonances in the driver yes all the time it can sound harsh distorted a bass driver you may not hear that quite as much mid-range is where all, that's where everything's happening, Yeah. right? The idea of a tune mass damper is not new. It had been used for uh, earthquake protection with skyscrapers. You know, you don't want the oscillation of an earthquake to make the building like shake apart. Uh, and it was also used in Formula One racing so effectively that when, when, the, when the Renault team used it, Formula One actually outlawed it. But look at this graphic. In essence, what you're gonna do is you're gonna add a, an additional mass and it oscillates in opposition to the resonant frequency to control it. You control that, the cone doesn't break up and it sounds so much better. And if you need something to like grasp like what kind of frequencies and what type of music that might help control, I mean I kind of always talk about like layered guitar tracks. It's very difficult to play those loud and have them not hurt your ears and to hear that separation and Man, they nailed it with a very clean linear speaker. I love that. That's why yeah. I got mine. And yep. Flax actually, and so this compared to the W cone on like their Sopras, this sounds a little bit more laid back, mm -hmm. which I also like. It mm -hmm. complements the Beryllium Tweeter really well. So if you don't want that total excitable speaker, you can dial it back with some Flax. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then uh, the uh, Faraday uh, oh, yeah. ring. Okay. Uh, that is another patent. There's a lot of patents in this speaker. Yeah. Yeah, the NIC or the neutral inductance circuit. And we'll show you a graphic in the video, but the NIC is all about controlling the magnetic field no matter where the voice coil is in its pistonic motion. Um, you know, the materials, the positioning are optimized to make the magnetic field no longer even affected by voice coil or amperage or the frequency of the current passing through it. And that technology did not happen overnight. That was like a really big like, hey, hell yeah, we did this. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, talking about running any type of amp with this speaker, oh um, we got to control it. And on their website, they have a really great image of without the Faraday and with the Faraday to kind of yeah. help you grasp. Yeah, you can the go to their website. They have a it's lot fabulous. of stuff about their, their technology. These are the two eight inch. Yeah. Uh, and I have to say that the bottom end, out of the, the, the Canta threes have, the bass is so prodigious. I mean, yeah. I mean, in some rooms, I don't want to say it would overblow up, but it, it is prodigious. Canta twos are probably the most popular. Yeah. But you know, if you have a bigger room, I would say Canta threes are the way to go, and they're easy to drive. I mean, Very what are easy. these? Are eighty? No. No, they're ninety one. Ninety one dB efficient. So eight ohm. Um, these are so the Canta three um, different from the two is it's a front port and rear port, so. We just talked about the amount of technology and air pressure and everything that these drivers are capable of handling. You're gonna have to release that somewhere because you don't want compression. Mm -hmm. You don't want air pressure. You don't want anything hindering that performance. Mm -hmm. These ports help release that. Right. They come with grills. They come in all kinds of colors. We've got all kinds of cool finishes. I mean, this is a, a kind of a taupe with a walnut, mm -hmm. which I think is absolutely lovely, but they come yeah. in uh, black and white. And it's a real piano finish. I mean, literally I've, 
They have an amazing spray booth there. I mean, oh, it was just so fun to watch spray booth? a company. Yeah, oh right? Oh, my God. It was ethereal watching that dude just spray and it's, spray. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's not like these other freaking companies that go, okay, order this shit from here and just bring that in from Cheyenne or wherever that place is called. <laughs> I mean, it's just a different thing, and they are so proud. And the French people, I, if they're watching this, or if you are French, I have had so many great experiences there, and uh, the culture there is lovely. They don't dislike Americans. Parisians dislike Americans, <laughs> but Parisians dislike everybody, and that's cool. It's hard to live in Paris. But they got, have, me, have they met me yet? Or? Well, they'll meet you okay. soon enough. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and that's, that's the way it is. You know, you get out of Paris and you realize, oh my God, uh, lovely people and the people at the factory. The class, the hospitality. The class. Dude, they've got every walk of life working for them. I'm talking like young people, male and female, older people, male and female, like literally every walk of life. It was very eye-opening and inspiring to see a company yeah. that produces over 500,000 drivers a year with that QC with the happy faces and with the development. Yeah, it was very yeah. cool. One last thing, if you have a tube amplifier mm -hmm. and if it has a four ohm tap and an eight ohm tap, even though this says it's an eight ohm speaker, you need to listen with the four ohm tap and then change it to the eight ohm tap, playing at the same volume with the same piece of music to find out what sounds better to you. Never ever go by what the speaker says when you're hooking up to a tube amp. Things don't work that way. You gotta use the tap that works best. But we have found that this will work amazing with a Prima Luna amp, you know, a 40 watt tube amp uh, will rock your world. Yeah. They're, they're very, very easy to drive compared to some speakers. Oh my God, and then the last thing I forgot to say this, and I hope you've already haven't zoomed. <laughs> and Kat can, will support what I'm about to say. This speaker does not have to be turned up to sound full. Mm -hmm. Damn it, I hope you stayed long enough to hear that. Yeah. Because it's important. Some speakers, and you know what I'm talking about, you gotta turn them up to get them to breathe, to hear the difference between light and dark and loud and soft, and just get them to, to come alive. And that is one of the greatest things, because I've got Focals in my big Kahuna system, right? I got Grand Utopias, and they're badass, and I don't have to play them loud to enjoy the living shit out of them. I, I love it. I love that. I was yeah. talking to a customer today, because there's nothing wrong with having to crank up your shit, but man, if you want those details at the lower volumes, and you want to keep it class and modern, like, yeah. dang, Focal will get you there. Hell yeah. So look, come to our beautiful store here in Southern California. Book in it. We're right by a couple of airports, you know. Come over, have a cup of coffee, meet my employees, uh, <laughs> or give them a call on the phone. Nobody's gonna work on commission. No one's gonna try to sell you a damn thing because we really want you to be happy, right? Yeah, we love the audio. Yeah, company. because at Upscale Audio, and make sure you support your local dealer, but if you're not gonna buy it from them, get it from us and, and we'll make sure you're happy. Because totally. what do we say at Upscale Audio? We're gonna treat your system like it's ours. Well, you got it right this time. <laughs> I know. Thank you, Kat. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You. Bye.